How's it going everybody? So today I'm going to be talking about the brand new full length album from the band Phoebus the Night. And the name of this album is Ferrum, Ferro, Ferro, Ferrer. And I know I, I butchered that, but it's some gnarly alliteration going on there. I dig it. But y'all know before I get into the nitty gritty, let's check out the cover. So boom, there it is. Take a look at that cover. Oh man, it, it's so tight. I, I love it. It has a very graphic novel or comic book style look to it. Um, very storybook. You know, it, like I said, it just has a kind of graphic novel uh, look to it. So it, it makes you almost want to like open it up and, and start looking through the, the story and whatnot. It's very inviting. It looks action packed. Uh, you know, right there on the cover, you can see this is definitely two uh, groups, you know, waging war. Uh, one, it definitely seems to be a good versus evil kind of deal. And the backdrop gives off a kind of historical type of look. You know, it, it looks like this is something that takes place somewhat in the past. Um, you don't really see guillotines just hanging out in the breeze anymore these days. So. It definitely looks like a historical type of deal, and you got all these like creatures kind of in the background, so there's a supernatural kind of feel to it as well, and like a castle, but you know, off in the background. Really, really cool cover. It really uh, stands out, in my opinion. Uh, a pretty unique looking. Um, so yeah, you're looking through some CDs at the the, the record shop or whatnot. And, and you see this, it's like, oh, wow. You know, it, it doesn't really look like um, you, your typical kind of cover. And, uh, you know, as far as does it convey what music, you know, what you're going to get on the album, uh, I definitely think so. Uh, you see a cover like this and, and the band name, Phoebus the Night, I, I, really, I think it, it definitely screams a power metal type of deal. Um, so, I... I really think the, the cover does a good job of, of conveying that uh, some sort of power symphonic style. Um, in, in my personal opinion, I don't think it could be misconstrued as like a death metal or anything like that. So, you know, as far as the cover goes and conveying well, what the, the style is, uh, I give it an A plus on both fronts. But yeah, that cover is just really, really tight. I definitely dig it without a doubt. Um, but uh, for the album itself, um, this bad boy's got 12 tracks on here uh, and comes in at about uh, 57 minutes. Um, so just shy of an hour, really. And um, it, it goes by pretty quick. I, I'm not going to lie to you. It, it, it just flows really, really nice. Um, you know, one song just kind of leads to the next, to the next, and it, it's just this this whole story kind of that you listen through. Uh, and so, again, the the fifty seven minutes or you know the hour or whatnot, it, it's not it doesn't drag. You know, there, there's really no filler. You know, everything feels like it's deliberately placed in there that it it, it makes sense to be in the sequential order that it is. And, um, you know, even at the end, it all kind of culminates up to the end and somewhat uh, ends on, on a cliffhanger. You know, it kind of ends without concluding. Uh, so it, it definitely makes you want to hear more. You know, I, the first time I listened to the, you know, the album, I got to the end and I was like, oh, man, <laughs> it, 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 they do a really good job of... Uh, you know, having you want more. Like, uh, I want to keep hearing this story and then keep hearing how this progresses. So uh, it definitely, definitely leaves you uh, wanting more. And so, you know, you go back and you, and you start the album over. And every time I listen to the, to the whole thing, I would still get to the end and just be like, oh, man, I just, I just wish it would keep going. But um, it's really cool, too, how... Uh, the way that the album starts out is uh, true to their word because I actually spoke to the band in a Ranger Talk video. Go check that out if you haven't already. Get some really cool insight to the band and, 
and their their songwriting process and, and just the storytelling aspect and all of that so yeah the, don't miss that but uh, the EP which I highly recommend as well it ends um, basically this album uh, picks up right where the EP ends so the EP is a great uh, prologue or prelude if you will to the album so I highly suggest you you check out the EP and you can listen to the EP and then just it, it goes straight into the album so uh, the, the full-length album here so you could really just listen to them back to back uh, and, and what you're gonna get here um, is uh, just some really really epic and, and, and grandiose symphonic power metal um, the the orchestrations the the symphonic elements are just absolutely incredible the arrangements are just are so meticulously done and so well thought out um, it's just incredible you know you never get any moments where it feels like there's just a, a mess of, of symphonies going on no everything it, it, it's just such a professional and um, uh, incredibly well done um, and orchestrated um, symphonic piece you know with with the symphonies and, and the, the songwriting and the arrangements it really really is something to uh, whatever the equivalent is of, of behold but like for your ears <laughs> um, you know it, it really is remarkable and, and just sets this this grand tone and, and this epic scale and oh it, it really and uh, there's some incredible keyboard and piano work in, in there, just absolutely incredible. And um, uh, there's some organ, you know, there's a little bit of so many different types of uh, uh, instruments and, and sounds woven throughout, but just, again, so well placed and so well thought out, you know, it definitely isn't something to where it's like, oh, they just wanted to throw in some symphonies and, and, and call it a day. No, I mean... This is just so well uh, orchestrated, quite impressive, quite, quite impressive. Uh, the guitar work is also very, very well done. You know, you get some moments with some solos, you get some really great riffs, uh, some great melodies with the guitars. Um, you know, I would say the guitars and, and the symphonies uh, it really go hand in hand really, really well. It's not like one outshines the other, you know, both. Uh, were given a lot of care and um, you know both carry their own weight and, and both have their moments uh, to um, uh, illuminate you know a particular moment in the story or you know just a, a feeling you know things like that so uh, the guitar work is very very well done and the drums oh, I, I really really enjoyed the drum work here um, very uh, you know, there, there's a lot of, of bombast in, in this thing, a lot of grandness, uh, and a lot of different movements. And the drum work, it just keeps up with that very, very well. And, and there's some great fills in there. There's some darker, heavier moments where the drums uh, really, really go to town and um, almost get some blast beats in there. And it just a very, very nuanced and, and diverse uh, drum play uh, here. And uh, the bass, you know, it does a really, really nice job of, um, you know, adding a, a pulse to the sound. And, uh, yeah, just the musicianship in general it is just top notch. And another thing I will say, too, that really, really impressed me is the production value, the production quality uh, of this thing. It, it just sounds so good, so good. You know, everything you can hear clearly, um, nothing sounds muddled. Um, it's crisp, so I was really, really uh, just uh, impressed with the production quality on this thing here. So uh, you don't always get that with, with um, you know, a band that's not on like just a, a huge label that with just uh, lots of cash flow going on. Um, uh, so yeah, really, really well done as far as the the mixing and mastering and, and just production goes. Uh, the vocals. Oh. Uh, I really love the vocals here in this band because 
you get something that you don't always get in uh, power metal genre is he's got a very deep kind of operatic voice. It's not in that, that higher, you know, power metal scream register, but it, it works so well. And it, it just has a very strong commanding voice. And uh, again, it, in a very operatic style, and it just suits this type of music because, um, it, like when I was speaking with the band, you know, they mentioned a lot of just telling a story through music, and, and that's really what this is. It almost somewhat like an opera, but with a very, you know, power uh, symphonic metal uh, backdrop. And uh, the vocals just do such a good job uh, of just, uh, you know, really having that strength in, in the voice to, to uh, you know, hammer home the, these big moments. But then there's a tenderness to the voice also when, you know, there's uh, the softer moments and, you know, a lot of, lot of nuance in there. And um, uh, you get some female vocals as well um, here and there. The one thing... I, I, I would like to hear a little bit more, only because it was there a little bit. It, it made me kind of wish that there was a little bit more of the female vocals in there as well. A little bit more of uh, the, the dual vocals. Not, not like all the way through, but a little bit of like a, a, a duet or, you know, just a little bit more given to the female vocals I think would have been really, really cool. But what you do get, you know, it's really nice and, it, you know, it... Uh, revitalizes thing, you know, it, it keeps things feeling fresh and, um, you know, the whole thing from start to finish, it, it just, it, it keeps building on itself in, in the story and, you know, it continues to feel fresh and like you're progressing through this story, you know, it never gets stale or anything like that, so, you know, it, it, it just starts out with this really uh, bombastic and, and grand build up. Uh, with the, the symphonies and whatnot to, uh, you know, get this thing started. And it, it really starts on a, on a really high and, and strong, epic note. Um, uh, track three, The Iron Queen, is, is one of my favorites. Just great melody and, and great sense of uh, epicness and scale. And uh, track four, The Scarlet Dance, which was actually released as a single uh, quite some time ago. It's just another great uh, song uh, that I, I recommend to check out. It, it gives you a good indication on, on what to expect on the whole album and, and just what I mean by this scale and this storytelling aspect. Uh, one of my favorites, one, one of the most memorable songs on here, which I think might end up being for, for many people, is track six, Darkness Will Prevail. And... Um, this is like, it, it makes me think of the type of song that, uh, you know, an eccentric uh, Disney villain might sing because it's got this, this delightfully wicked uh, feel and attitude about it. And again, this, this real uh, eccentric type of character, and the, the way uh, the vocals are done in this song, it's just so good. And, and the melody and, and the, the music here in this song, it, it just, like I said, it's got this gleefully kind of, evil, uh, nefarious tune to it, but with like a, a hint of whimsy in there. It, it just is really, really cool. Um, I definitely, like I said, think that this is going to be one of the most memorable, like a real fan favorite song on here, because um, you can really just visualize this thing happening. Um, this this villain just kind of going through the motions and doing a little, like I said, like this this Disney villain type of almost like a monologue through song and uh, it's groovy. I, I just really, really dig it. And then uh, track seven, Children of the Night, really darkens things up a bit. Really, you know, makes it feel like, oh, the, the hordes of evil are, are being unleashed now. And that's another thing with the vocals is um, he, he, there's just the, the different uh, shades of, of vocals that he can do for the different characterizations. And the, the different moods is just really, really something else. And he's got these growls that he'll do also um, to really personify the, the evil side and, and the, the villains and, and stuff like that. And it just works really, really well. Uh, so you, you always really kind of know who's speaking, you know, what's going on and, and all of that. So just really phenomenal uh, work uh, as far as that goes. 
uh, you get this one, uh, there, there's a couple instrumental tracks, and, and you get this one, um, uh, one song on here too, Parabellum, that is just so epic, and really builds uh, to like this n nefarious, um, uh, dark uh, setting and, and mood, and um, uh, it, it just, it, it builds up to, to track 11, which is the title track, Ferum, Ferro, Ferro, Ferror. And uh, it, it just, that, it, that's like the pinnacle, you know, things are really getting epic and, and grand and, and the good guys are really trying to, to uh, um, unite and, and, you know, face this, this overwhelming uh, foe and odds and it just feels epic and uh, really, really cool, you know, the way everything really kind of comes together and then uh, track 12, The Sword of Justice is a great way to, to round out the album, and like I said, really leaves you wanting more. So, uh, yeah, I'm just really, really impressed with this thing. Um, from the storytelling, from the music, from the symphonic elements, the orchestrations, the arrangements of the songs, the vocals, uh, it, it just, it, this is uh, something that is not to miss, in my opinion. I, I really think it, there's something special about these folks here, you know, that helps them stand out in this genre of this like power symphonic metal with the, the heavy kind of uh, fantasy storytelling um, aspects. Uh, there's just something special, like you, you can really visualize what's going on here and, and this deserves to be turned into like a, a Broadway show or, or, or an opera. It just lends itself so well, uh, so, so well, so I would love if something like that were to happen, that would be so tight. But uh, as it stands, like, you can really just kind of visualize this um, through the, the song and the, the songs and the, the album and the music. They just do such a good job with that. So it's just epic and grand and uh, bombastic and it, it just hits all the right notes. It hits all the right notes. I really think this is going to be something that makes a lot of people take notice of, of this band. And, uh, yeah, I, I really hope that's the case because they deserve it. This album is a real, one of the biggest surprises, I would say, of the year. Um, it just, you know, the, the, these guys just kind of came out of nowhere. Um, as far as, uh, I, you know, I'm aware, I wasn't too aware of them uh, before, but they reached out to me and asked me to check out, like, a song in, in their EP and, and now we have like the full album, so uh, really impressive stuff. They just kind of came out of nowhere and um, are, are putting their stamp on the genre and uh, saying, hey, this is this is us. And um, yeah, it, it's just awesome. And especially because they have a very um, uh, positive and uh, just, you know, this good, good versus evil kind of uh, feel to them. So I dig it. I really, really enjoy this album. I highly recommend it um, to any power and symphonic metal fans or anyone that even just enjoys opera or good storytelling through music. This is one not to miss. Like I said, this is one really not to miss. Um, so yeah, that's my thoughts on Phoebus the Night's debut full-length album, Ferrum, Ferro, Ferro, Ferror. And let me know in the comments down below what you thought of the EP, what you thought of the previous singles, uh, and uh, are you excited to listen to this album? And if you've listened to it already, uh, what do you think of it? Let's talk about it in the comments down below. And thank you all so much for tuning in. I'll catch you next time. Ranger, out.